Welcome to the Aim for Success podcast. I'm Joni Knighty, a licensed psychotherapist and certified clinical hypnotist and trainer. I'm also the founder of Aim for Success and Joni Knighty Hypnosis. I've been practicing for over 27 years and I'm excited about sharing my experiences and those of my guests. Be sure and check out my website, aim-for-success.com and joni90hypnosis.com to learn more about my services and products. I also invite you to check out my store, aim-store.net. As a gift to you for listening to this podcast, use the code SUCCESS to receive 25% off your first self-hypnosis audio purchase. You are listening to Episode 4 of the Aim for Success podcast featuring Shelby Mosley. Shelby is an actor as well as a voice and piano teacher. She recently completed her first film debut as Marla Wayne in Less Worthy of Survival. The movie themes are women's resilience, willpower, and strength in adversity. Listen and enjoy as Shelby and I talk about a variety of topics, including our mutual familiarity with the unique challenges of acting and performing, the use of hypnosis and other techniques to prepare for auditions and step into her role, her goal of being someone who is easy to work with and stay humble, the law of attraction, and so much more. So welcome this morning. I want to introduce you to Shelby Mosley. And I know you heard the intro. There's so much Shelby has done in only 22 years of her life. I'm going to share a little something with her about myself that she may or may not know. I don't think she knows a lot and show you how our experiences kind of tie in together. Also, help her to see how the dots connect down the road and that what she's doing right now will be very, very important in terms of bringing it all together for the overall success that I know she wants to have. So hello. It's so great having you here. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Oh, thanks for having me. It's good to be here. You're a very, very busy lady. <laughs> you know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been really busy um, filming recently, and mm -hmm. also you're a teacher. So um, what? So your schedule sounds a lot like mine. Um, you work at yeah. night, right? So it's yeah, so, exactly. so interesting that we're doing this interview in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Before I have to go to work later, yeah. Yeah. So we're bringing our best version of our morning selves here, right? So I, I want to start by saying um, just how impressed I am with you. Not only your background and your journey that I'll have you talk about more, but the fact that you, at a very, very young age, you've been someone who has really put a lot of time into community service. Um, and I know that that's helped you in a lot of ways. Now being in this place, uh, having your first film debut, and we'll, we'll talk more about that in just a few moments, how has your community service helped you get to that point? Well, a lot of my community service has always been through dance, which is when I started performing really since I was, yeah, I was three years old. Um, and then that just gave me even more training and more time to be able to perfect, perfect it while still giving back to the community. Um, I was a part of the community Nutcracker for a long time, um, which was, um, we partnered with Dreams Come True, which is the nonprofit organizations. We partner with them to help get performances for people. Um, also through Jacksonville, um, ballet company where we went and performed at different nursing homes to help bring bring some joy and light into those people's lives that reside there um but that just helped me also stay humble through all of this um help me stay down to earth um not get a big head about anything um and then just at the same time being able to keep performing and perfecting my craft as well 
So that's a, those are great experiences. When I hear the word humble, I also think of you know you being um, someone who's a, a an approachable and safe person, and that's not always present in the industry that you're in currently. Um, yeah, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you how I know that. And here's where I'll tie in those experiences that we talked about earlier. So I, in my 20s, I was an actor as well. So I had a, a modeling background. Um, so I was very interested in trying that. But going through the audition processes and, um, you know, preparing for jobs and opportunities that you may or may not get. It was a great experience for me. I learned a lot. I learned about uh, rejection. I learned a lot about what that meant. I learned how or how to avoid personalizing that rejection and understanding that they were looking for something and I may have had part of it or, or maybe even none of it, but it was about what they needed. Right? Yeah. Rejection is so 90% of the job. You know, it's also a challenge, right? It is. Definitely. Just trying not to take anything too personally, which is something I've had to learn. Yes. And sitting when you're waiting for an audition of some kind, I remember the comparisons that were made, right? Yep. And, you know, I was making comparisons and I learned that was just um, a, a not a, it was a very bad thing to do in terms of mm -hmm. um, preparing myself. I did, I was still somehow learned to keep myself in, in a certain space and not allow myself to peripherally look and compare myself. Um, you, the best thing to do is to prepare and to understand you've done the best that you can do and go in with what you've got and just show up, right? Can you talk to me about some of your experiences? And I also think there's a fine line between being confident and then just having a big head, <laughs> coming or at least coming across that way. So yeah. you need to be able to figure out how to present yourself as you know what you're doing. Yes. And you are like act like you've done this a million times. Yes. <laughs> you know, even though you might be slightly new, that's the thing. Um, even in auditions, you know, you're acting still, acting like you – even if you have no idea what you're doing and you're really nervous, you have to act like you know what you're doing. Act like you belong there um, and yes. then show them that you know what you're doing and why they should hire you um, without coming across as hard to work with with an ego. Right. So that is truly a skill, isn't it? Mm -hmm. My yeah. number one goal in any production is to be easy to work with. That's a great goal. Mm -hmm. And it's how do you how, how do you think you're doing with that goal? Um, I think I think I'm accomplishing that. Um, especially with this last film I did, just willing to be flexible, mm -hmm. um, to a point. You don't want to get pushed around, but being able to be flexible with your time, um, taking direction the first time, uh, not questioning every little thing. You know, just being easy to work with. <laughs> I, it's um, funny when you said, um, you know, not being pushed around, you were literally being pushed around in that film that you just <laughs> did. Yeah, maybe, I'm maybe you were doing most of the pushing. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm very excited uh, about that. That pushing around was okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that pushing around is okay. You know, let's talk about when we work together, that type of preparation is very important. Uh, it's most of life requires performance of some kind and in yeah. this case it's you know just a theater performance or a film performance or you know you may be singing whatever it is that you're doing mm -hmm. um but it's it regardless it's performance and it requires that you step into a certain role and step out of anything that would hold you back right from giving your best performance Okay, so we've worked together in my office, and then you've done some things outside of the office that you were able to use. Can you talk about that, about you know, how it is that we ended up working together and what that was like? Because a lot of people 
they go on my website or, you know, they've seen me at talks, but they really don't have a clue what it's like to actually work with me. And they you know, mm-hmm. might be a little hesitant with some of the myths and, you know, about hypnosis. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was going in, <laughs> honestly, I was like, I don't know what I'm going into here, honestly. Um, but, uh, it wasn't really what I was expecting. You know, like you think about, you hear like hypnotism, you're like, oh, I'm not gonna remember any of this. And I'm going to be doing all this crazy stuff while I'm like out of it. And she's like, hypnotizing. And it's not the case. You know, I was aware the whole time, but just more of in a relaxed state. It's like, you're willingly going into the state and just listening and internalizing everything. Um, it wasn't anything scary. It was, it was a good experience. <laughs> you know what you were saying earlier about being easy to work with? I am easy to work with because I appreciate all feedback, you know, whether it's um, good or bad. Although I don't yeah. really think there's any bad feedback. I don't think there's no, any, any feedback is good feedback. It is. Or not. It is. And you know what? At 22, you being able to boldly make that statement t- says a whole lot about you, you know? And how quickly you're going to be able to, it really does. And how quickly you'll be able to succeed because it took me a long time to figure that out. I had some fun with my modeling and acting career. Um, mm-hmm. I, I went, I was in a, I had a, a lot of bit parts, you know, those um, extra parts. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they were still out of my comfort zone. You know, I was in big, I had, I ended up with really great extra parts though. I was always in a position somehow. And I do believe, um, I have a friend, Victoria Gallagher, and she, she does, um, not, not all of her work is law of attraction, but primarily works with law of attraction. And that's basically, you know, really putting out there what it is that you want and uh, Mm -hmm. expecting it to happen. And, um, She's written a really, really great book, by the way, that I'll, I'll tag in this podcast. But um, I think I've always had an understanding at some level of that. Because when, once I got in as an extra, I, I saw myself doing something a little bigger. And um, <laughs> bigger. That is right. We're on a roll today. I love this. <laughs> I love how I this is all. telling me about that part. And then I went back and watched it. And I was like, oh my gosh, there she is. There she is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was and- like right before the piano scene, right? That's right. Yeah. And then Intimate Strangers with Stacey Keach, you know, talking about being humble, those actors were just amazing to me, you know, knowing that I would be yeah. nervous even doing that role, you know. And yeah, they're I, willing to like, you know, be, just talk to you and not be like, don't even look at me, you know, like the whole diva act. And that's, yeah. that's something big too, is even on set, just if, you know, if you get to that place where you're a little more well known and you have extras on there who just want to talk to you, you know, be willing to do it. Don't come across as a jerk. (laughs) So, and I know you won't, I know that you'll always be, you know, that way, be wonderful with people, you know, that's the goal. (laughs) Yeah. But I know that you're going to be a lot like my friend, Catherine Hicklin. And I told you a little bit about her. You know, she has a, a very long and um, successful acting career. And she's now a hypnotist. And she does amazing shows, when she, you know, combining her acting skills with um, what she understands to be a very important tool to help people, hypnosis, um, where they're, you know, she's putting on shows. But at the end, she's, she's providing them with very, very important affirmations that will help them in life. So... Let's talk about, because I read on your bio, and I'm just so curious, it said that you discovered on a whim at the age of nine that you could mm-hmm. sing. So what, tell me about that. So this is a good story. So that's actually how I met my best friend, which I'm still best friends with today. We actually ended up going to uh, high school and college together, uh, my best friend, Emily. So she already knew she could sing, and we had like kind of newly become friends at this point and I was thinking hmm, I could do that <laughs> and that's literally how it happened so then Emily and I started singing together all the time with her sister Sarah we would like sing in church sing at school um like at assemblies and stuff and then that's when I decided to audition for La Villa School of the Arts which is the middle school for the arts here in Jacksonville for voice um and I got into that and then great I went to Douglas Anderson and then JU here I am. 
Yeah, so those schools, for, for anyone, you know, a lot of people don't know. So La Villa, um, Douglas Anderson, and Jacksonville University are wonderful schools, and they're not easy to get into. You know, you have to no. audition. and um, um, Yeah, with La Villa, you have to pass the audition, and then there's, like, a lottery. So even if you pass the audition, you could still not get in simply because you didn't – you weren't picked in that lottery, too. So I just, just got – lucky with that <laughs> you had some talent and you could develop it and look what happened mm -hmm. so so some of the challenges that you had along the way transitioning from um theater well one of the things is you you, you just recently worked on a film and mm -hmm. that's very different from theater so mm -hmm. how did you manage that you know what kind what kinds of challenges did you have exactly yeah, so with theater, you have to be able to reach the back of the audience um, with your expressions, with your emotions, um, which means a lot of big body language, a lot of big facial expressions, and a very, uh, you have to project your voice a lot. And then the film, your audience is the camera, which is right in your face. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I had to really learn how to tone it down one thing I really had to uh, tame was my eyebrows because like in theater my eyebrows would just go crazy like this trying to get my expressions across right and then my director for this film be like Shelby your eyebrows are all over the place I'm like I'm sorry <laughs> but I had to learn how to just train myself to tone it down and be more how I am every day which is you know just uh just miniature gestures um maybe like just just the smallest of expressions in your face that would just slightly suggest a different emotion because the camera is right there to pick it up. Any little twitch, any little just movement you do, it picks up. So I had to learn that. And the fact that you don't have to project your voice to reach to the back of a room because you have a boom mic right there. <laughs> that, is, that's... So that was definitely a challenge, but it was, I kind of had to learn it as I went along mm -hmm. um, because I hadn't done a film before. But it was, I learned a lot, definitely. And I think I've, I'm working towards getting that down. Well, you must have gotten some of it down because you successfully completed that film. I did, <laughs> but there's always right. room for improvement. There's all, there is. But I also, along the way, as you were learning that, you must have been telling yourself, I can certainly do this, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, you know, I don't think I ever had a doubt, actually. I was just like, okay, I've got to learn a few different things, but I got this, you know? So what do you do to keep up that confidence? I actually think a lot of that has to do, at least for me, with surrounding yourself by the right people um, who will keep lifting you up, and keep, but at the same time keeping you grounded. Um, my parents, uh, my friends, um, and even the, my castmates that I was working with, um, just helped lift me up. Like, um, I was working with pretty seasoned actress. Her name was Presa. She was, we actually became pretty close on set, um, and hung out a lot, <clears throat> but she was helping me because, uh, when we had online rehearsals first before we even met each other, or went to set. And I was like, you know, I've never done this kind of thing and I'm having to learn the difference and she was you know she kept helping me out giving me tips guiding me along and um just knowing that I had my fellow castmates behind me too and that we were all supporting each other really helps a lot that's a great point to surround yourself with people who support your goal and you do have a great support system don't you I do I'm yeah. so thankful for that I think of your community services really tying into overall purpose you know mm -hmm. taking your your career and your success as it builds but also remaining humble and using that for a greater purpose I, I love that but um you know I I keep saying that to you because I hope that you'll really continue to internalize that and let it inspire you because you know and I feel like you just touched the, you know, just the tip of that iceberg. And I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, another thing that I've been working on is helping athletes um, and performers and just people make transitions. And so you um, <clears throat> had some, was it the transition from high school to college or college to 
the present that was presented the most challenges? Um, I feel like it can be each one of them was just as much a challenge, but in different ways, you know, going from high school to college, just dealing with a little more responsibility, a little more freedom, you know, not having the school bell to tell you when, where to go and when, you yeah. know, um, <laughs> and then just the transition from college into the real world, you know, um, it's like you graduate, woohoo, and I was like, oh, now what, <laughs> you know, um, went to New York, did a showcase, that was great, and then, uh, I found the job that I have now, which is teaching private voice and piano lessons, which um, is a great gig considering all the other things I could be doing right now. The survival job, quote unquote. Um, and then well, <clears throat> because that job allows me the time to send in auditions and look for, look for jobs, you know, just acting jobs, which is what I really want to do. Um, so that allows, gives me the flexibility to do that, which is also how I found my recent role. Um, but it's a lot about the unknown. Yes. I think, which gives me, which has always given me the most anxiety, whether it's going into a new chapter of life or even just going to the doctor, not knowing what's wrong with you, you know, um, right. just the unknown can be very scary. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, again, having that support system. Um, having the right people around you helps you get through it. Well, I'm kind of excited about what you just said because I could see where um, I can't wait for you to come back to my office so that we can work on a reframe and a great plan for embracing the unknown. Mm -hmm. I think moving forward in your, what you refer to as your survival job, I see that job that, in that role right now for you very differently. I see that as your inspirational job because here you are, you're not just your average voice and piano teacher. <laughs> okay. I mean, your I, students I, I, are, it's not just a survival job. I do enjoy yeah. it, but that's, you know, that's like what in the acting world, when people are trying to find, you know, finally get to the place where they can do nothing but, act it's their quote-unquote survival job right which i mean in t entails serving tables um but this i'm very lucky to have what i have i'm very well, nice to have i feel like you could, we are playing like tag because now i just think it's funny that you said survival since the name of the film is what <laughs> less worthy of survival <laughs> ah that's funny uh -huh. okay this is like three times now um no, I know, I know that you're, you're, in a, you're a very appreciative person. I'm just, you know, mm -hmm. knowing you. I want to instill in you um, mm -hmm. the idea and the understanding that you have these students that have this amazing teacher who just finished yeah. a film. And so I love that you, um, that you are doing exactly what you're doing right now for a couple of different reasons. You know, the ones I just mentioned and also as we work together and I'm and because Definitely. I think you can incorporate a lot of what what you've learned from me and what I can and more that I can teach you with your students and help them learn faster and more efficiently and with and have more confidence so you listen to so some of that we like we we played around with bilateral stimulation I don't mm -hmm. know, remember passing the water bottle around we started with that right. for anxiety um, which is a great tool to use um, when you're waiting for an audition. Uh, I've actually used that with some of my students, one of, some of my more anxious ones. Like they were, like I had a couple who were like came in and wouldn't even sing in front of me. Like they were so nervous. And then we tried that, and then I was able to get work with them a little bit. That's fabulous. So I love that you're doing that with your students. That makes me even more excited to get together so I can show you some fun things. And also, I think it's important to have fun. You were in New York, when we were working together, you were traveling to New York for that mm -hmm. audition. And that was exciting. That was a great trip for you, right? It was, it was a fantastic trip. I actually met a lot of, uh, um, so like the showcase, it went well, but they were like, they were wanting to represent people who were ready to move to New York, like at that moment. And I was like, I just got out of college. I have no money to move. <laughs> um, right. But we saw a lot of shows 
um, that week. And you know, at, like at a Broadway show, you can like go to the stage door, have them sign your program. And a lot of them actually, uh, they were like, hey, hey, where are you from? What are you doing here? And like, uh, we would explain and they're like, really? And like, we would be getting advice from these people who just finished a show. Like, it was awesome. And then we like went to the day today show a couple times and like, you know, we, they have the signs We're like, Hey, let's just put a uh, class of 2018 JU, you know, uh, musical theater. And then they'd see that and they'd like come and talk to us. And we're like, this is awesome. <laughs> so, like, I remember seeing that. I actually, good advice. I remember seeing you on the today show. This is actually, hang on. The poster is right there. Oh, oh, that's awesome. I remember we saw um, Anastasia when Christy Altamere was Anastasia. And um, afterwards, she came out and she would take time to meet with everyone and actually have a conversation with them. And she was just the most sweet and humble person, like actor that I've ever met. And I was like, that's who I want to be like. Exactly. Yes. Because I remember just leaving feeling so amazing. Like, she just just she's one of the nicest people ever i was like i want to be like that that's the kind of actor i want to be you know just and that's a wonderful just, just light into the world yes type of person to aspire to and you are actually becoming that person uh work in progress you're doing a great job you know looking forward i think that we can work on an audio and that you know continues to affirm your goals and um, mm -hmm. and keep you on that path because that's part of the self awareness that I'm talking about. Then you'll you don't have to leave things to chance or worry that you're going to lose yourself, so to speak. Um, also, I didn't want to leave this out just because I'm a big sports fan, of course. And um, mm -hmm. but um, I know that you are a huge Jacksonville Jaguar fan. I am. <laughs> yes. I am excited. Probably. I really want to do a team talk for them and get more involved in working with them. Um, and that that's something I'm, I see myself doing and I believe it will happen. But you also have a tendency to get noticed when you're at the football games. I've seen you, you know, <laughs> on TV where they just, you know, randomly interviewing people. Yeah, oh yeah. At a uh, mellow mushroom at all access. Yeah. And then Charlie and I actually, um, made it into their 2018 hype video on YouTube because after the playoff game against the Bills at the stadium in 2017, filming and all this stuff, and Charlie and I happened to get in there for like, for like, for like two seconds, you can see us in there. And it was like all over YouTube. I was like, oh my gosh, Charlie. <laughs> and I saw that too. And that's actually what I was referring to. So it's no yeah. accident though, Shelby that these things are that, you know, you are obviously someone who stands out and that, that part of you, you know, that ability to connect with people and get noticed without even, you know, actually quote, mm -hmm. crying hard, you Trying. know, not going out of your way. That says a lot about what's coming from you internally. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my, my message to you at this point is keep doing what you're doing. Anything else you'd like to share, like any unusual experiences or funny stories or anything you can think of? Uh, oh, I do have one thing, actually. It's okay. It's more Jaguar related, though, but I think it's hilarious. Um, so everyone knows about the whole 2017 AFC Miles Jack wasn't down debacle, which I have a t-shirt, by the way. Um, so I took a writing class at JU my senior year. And the theme was we can write anything about sports as long as it's about sports. I wrote a five-page paper entitled Miles Jack Wasn't Down, and I got 100 on it. <laughs> well, congratulations on the 100. <laughs> Again, though, you see how everything connects? Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Well, so I'm so excited about your film. I know you must be. You I am, yeah. You haven't even seen it yet. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think it it's also important to mention that you were required to be somewhat of an athlete in that film, right? <laughs> yeah. My dance background helped me so much in that film um, with the fight choreography. Yes. Um, so I was able to pick it up really quick and just know it just kind of, it came really easy <clears throat> for me. Um, there's actually another dancer actress in there who I had a fight scene with and um 
we actually put counts to our choreography and it just was ended up being so smooth and it looked so real and I was really happy with it um but it that helped a lot again how everything's connected it's like yeah. my 20 years of dance training paid off <laughs> isn't that amazing yeah I mean with it, something it, I had never done before really and it will pay off in other ways as well mm -hmm. um I see backing up to what you just said I love I love this so much in three sentences you use two words that we don't think of as going together. You use the word easy and fight. Okay. Man. And, but, <laughs> right. Well, and I think, you know, we talk about, you, you've listened to my audios. You, you use audios to prepare, right? For auditions mm -hmm. before. And um, so it, when you train that way, your brain and your mind does start to change. You know, mm -hmm. and you'll you'll be able to pass that on to so many. You know, your students now, as you're being interviewed in the future, and um, and if they say, "How did you do it?" Instead of just saying, "Oh, well, I just really worked on my confidence," you'll be able to tell them how. Yeah, because he, here's the problem: a lot of times you have um, coaches or um, teachers you know, mm -hmm. or even directors and producers, and they're telling you to do something. But what we really need to know is how. <laughs> right. I mean, obviously, we want to be confident. Obviously, we want to be able to do that thing. But if someone doesn't show us how, it's, you know, it mm -hmm. makes it makes it a little difficult to figure out. Yeah. And sometimes it just doesn't come. So I mean, I'm so excited. Um, hey, so I, since I've got you on here, um, in somewhat of a public venue. Um, I would love to have you help me with a project that I've been working on. I'm sure. making audios and making a series for performers and for auditions. I've worked with several high school and um, a few college performers that were getting ready for their recitals this year. And, oh boy, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, it's very intense. Well, if you would uh, be willing to help me with that product, you know, making products so that, um, so, you know, a lot of times performers and, and, you know, just people in general don't have time to come into an office to, to get help. I would like to make some audios and make some videos to make those experiences more pleasant and more successful. So. Yeah, yeah. definitely look forward to it. Me too. So you're hired. And I, I could, and I couldn't be more excited about that. So <laughs> thank you so much for doing this today. I know a lot of people Absolutely. are going to benefit from this in different ways. You never know how, um, how and which, um, which parts of a discussion, a conversation are going to mean something and resonate mm -hmm. with someone. And so that's why I think it's important to kind of jump all over the place and, and tackle a lot of different topics and a lot of different issues and just have a lot yeah. of fun. So we'll, we'll find out because I'll be getting some comments and I'll let you know. So. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Let me know. Okay. So I'm going to turn this camera off so we can just chat for a bit. And um, yeah, again. you're welcome. Thank you.